in the Trump era, those championship visits to the White House have become intensely political, with plenty of media coverage of who goes, who doesn't, and why. But this week's trip by the Boston Red Sox took things to another level, thanks to the team's racial baggage and the fact that its owner also owns the Boston Globe. Adam Riley has more. The 2018 World Series champion, the Boston Red Sox, very special group of people. But not all those special people made the trip, including manager Alex Korup, who's from Puerto Rico and cited the island's slow recovery from Hurricane Maria to explain his decision. We still uh, have a long ways to go, you know, and that's our re reality. So, um, you know, it's, it's pretty tough, you know, to go celebrate when we're in, in where we at. Particularly with a president who's been accused of callousness when it comes to Puerto Rico. And as the media noted, players of color like Mookie Betts and David Price also took a pass. It's hard to ignore that all the players not going to the White House are men of color. The racial division uh, was so stark that it just couldn't be ignored. If we were on that team and I say, Chris, I'm not going, I wouldn't go. Globe columnist Adrian Walker thought the whole team should have stayed home, writing, Donald Trump would have been Tom Yawkey's kind of president. Doesn't that give the Sox brass pause? Of course, Sox owner John Henry also owns the Globe, which deleted some online comments critical of Henry, including, your newspaper condemns Trump's divisive policies, but now you are going to kiss his ring. Meanwhile, after Wednesday's game, the Sox banned a Washington Post reporter from the clubhouse who was covering the controversy. Awkward all around. I thought that was particularly hypocritical because there was not a lot of coverage in the paper about why certain people were going and why they weren't. Alex Cora did sort of wait until the last minute to make his decision. If he had done that earlier, maybe the whole thing would have been canceled, which in my opinion <laughs> was what probably should have happened. But to ban the, the, the uh, Washington Post reporter from the clubhouse, he had been in the clubhouse earlier, started asking questions, and then after the game they said, that's it, we're not taking it. Why? I mean, he's not going to put it in the Boston... Globe, it's going it's to go in the Washington Post. No, and that's it's right. Just crazy, and you know, taking down the the, the comments too. They're, they're just trying to sanitize a situation that was pretty pretty nasty. I know. Uh, the Globe, by the way, denied that the comments were taken down because of criticism of the Henrys. Uh, they said that they were uncivil, and that may be the case. But it was a bad look. Uh, yeah. Certainly the Adrian Walker column was tougher than anything that was in the comments, and they didn't seem to have any trouble with that. Uh, but this has just been a mess all around, and I agree with you. I think the bottom was reached when the Red Sox didn't let that Washington Post Yeah, they did away. quote uh, Sam Kennedy much earlier, m weeks or months ago, saying, yeah, it's going to be a really tough situation. It's really awkward. So it's almost like, oh, well, that, that had nothing to do with it, and they were acting like... Yeah, no, well... Yeah. Yeah. I, I was surprised about those two mistakes that you guys both cited because I think in general, John Henry's done a pretty good yes. job separating his stewardship yeah. of yep. the Red Sox and the stewardship of the Globe. I mean, there's never been any inkling of a suggestion that anyone critical of the Red Sox has been censored or, yeah. you know, stepped on in any way. You know, Adrian's column, you're right, was excellent and very strong. Dan Shaughnessy had a strong mm -hmm. column about it. So it's surprising to me that they flubbed those last couple of things because I think, you know, the answer that they've navigated pretty well for many years now is just let the writers write what they're going to write, cover the team. And I think, you know, in terms of John Henry himself, the challenge there was not going as the media guy, but going as he represented the Red Sox there. And he could sort of, you know, that's fraught enough as it yeah, is. Exactly. But, you know, don't worry about the Take off don't one half, put on another. There. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, is, is it just me or does it appear that a lot of news organizations are kind of on, a, on an issue like this, they seem to be as polarized as the rest of the nation, right? The, the general public, you expect them to, to, to kind of, take a side on something like this, but I'm watching MSNBC and the morning show and saying, how dare, I can't believe that they're going, they should never go. It, it, you know, these kinds of things happen in, in most administrations. We saw Tom Brady didn't go to, after one of their Super Bowls, did not go to the White House uh, under President Obama. For whatever reason, whatever excuse they give, they choose not to go, it can be political. But this just seems a little different now that um, when, when these decisions are made, 
then networks or newspapers take this stance and, and sort of scream it out and say, yeah, how I dare what you? Has well, well, one of the problems sure. is that they, they used to go instantly, like within 24 hours, 48 hours, right. to get it over with. Now we're waiting six months. For right, so. <laughs> yeah. exactly. Yeah, well, what's changed is the guy in the White House is doing <laughs> racial rants. Mm. So that makes it really clear. And then there are uh, team members, all of who are color, who are saying, I'm not going to a place where the guy is making a racial rant. The end. Now, other people had other reasons. Like the guy who didn't want to go to uh, when President Obama was in office. Tim Thomas. It, yes, because he disagreed with his policy. And that was uh, strictly a political, that was his political stance. Okay, so now you know it. This we have crossed over because you have made a statement about certain communities, period, and they have responded in kind. So I think that makes a huge difference. And uh, by the way, what shouldn't John uh, wait, wait, wait a minute, let that? me just say this. David Nakamura is a sports reporter who happens to be of color from the Washington Post. I thought it was extremely tacky mm -hmm. to turn him away from the Red Sox. Coming to Boston, always fraught around sports and race to turn away <laughs> the reporter who's a person of color talking about an issue that has to do right. with rates and sports. Right. Really? Yeah, I agree. And I think John Henry <laughs> should have addressed it.